One way I like to ha have fun with selection tool is via the following test I'm about to show you is I'll start off with a plane and I will just subdivide a couple of times and repeat it. And then we will just use circle select to just draw an X and we'll just E to extrude and we will perform a clean mesh, which we see has now put our edges here and here. Dang mesh machine. Let's um, turn that off. I don't know why I'm always having to turn off mesh machines uh, symmetry tool, but it directly interferes with ours. So let's do that again. And what we want to do is use a bisect mod to split half of it. And from here, let's try solving this into subdivision. So right now, this is what our subdivision is looking like. So I'm going to make it where subdivision doesn't show in edit mode, which is the way I've always been kind of taught to work with it. And we'll just select these edges and we'll shift click mark to jump into select tool and we'll press B in order to bevel just to place kind of a foundational bevel to protect us. However, before we even do that, let's go ahead and solve this for the corners. So we'll connect these two points here and we'll jump back into select and press X to jump over to knife. enter and we'll bisect mod to the other side just to minimize the amount of work. So now if we look at our subdivision result, this is what we're getting. We could try putting a couple of loops in there like so to try to harden it out. You know, this is how you would do it back in the day, but really we want to deal with every single little crease that's happening here. So first I'll put a loop here. So just kind of quarantine this area because we want our flow to end in this and we don't want to add any additional geometry to this outer boundary. So now we can actually select all three of these, shift select, mark to jump into select tool. And we'll press B to bevel. And we'll just select all of these and join them. And we could even jump over to knife, which now I've just realized probably needs a spacebar quick change menu. Probably not on spacebar though, but it's definitely a piece of tech in our other tools that would be a benefit here. So while this looks like a mess, we could easily solve all of this to quads just by turning these into diamonds. And we have our geometry centralized to the small area. We could even select this loop all the way around. Shift click to jump into mark and we'll press B to bevel and we see that bevel just doesn't work out here. And so I'm curious as to why. First, I think there's some doubles happening. So let's remove any doubles that are happening. And let's try that same maneuver again. Press B, that's actually a little more acceptable. So now let's press Alt V and look at our face orientation and we see that our face orientation looks correct, but it just wasn't able to make this maneuver happen. So that is definitely a curiosity. However, more than likely it would have went through if these edges just weren't here. So let's actually experiment with that just, just for fun. And we see that there is definitely something extra in here. So let's bring it all back with that knowledge, knowing that there's something in here that is supposed to be there. And we'll just dissolve that. And reconnect this area and we will just shrink these in and we see that we're right back where we started we have a loop able to flow across so a lot of subdivision modeling is just understanding kind of what's going on with your geometry and following it and tracing it and troubleshooting it because there were doubles happening here and we just weren't aware that they were there but they definitely came back to haunt us at the end so now we have a perimeter loop selecting i mean uh, protecting this particular area which means that that area is now safe let's control click all the way across here We'll select this, press B as well to perform a bevel to protect this area. Now this area is secure. So at this point we can now select this, shift click, jump back in and we will just press X a couple of times to jump over to knife. And I believe we should probably have a straight version of knife in here, but that's probably a talk for another update. But the work just goes on as you see.
even though we created a mistake there, we're just going to keep going. Select this point, cut to here, spacebar to apply. And now we see that this area is crisply taken care of. In fact, we can grab this boundary and mark it, grab that, mark it as well. And we see that now we have a very crisp subdivision controlled area. We can press Alt V and we're able to see the wireframe is really centralized just in this area. So while it looks like a bit of a mess, it's just a style that I'm particularly used to of centralizing geometry to an area and not letting it escape because it's real easy to solve something like this in a way that actually compromises your form. So let's try it again. And luckily, since we um, made it with a couple of subdivides, we're just gonna try doing it again, but this time we're going to solve it a little less optimal. So here we are with our original geometry. We're just gonna put a loop here, put a loop here. We'll subdivide it, see what it looks like. Turn off subdivision and edit mode. And we'll put a loop here, put a loop here, put a loop here, put a loop here, and put a loop there, and put a loop there. And we see now that our form is held together uh, thanks to all these control loops that were added in. In fact, let's Alt X and mirror this just on both sides. Even though it doesn't look right, we'll just move the mirror modifier up one and then it'll look correct. And then we only have to work on one fourth quadrant, similar to how we did with the other side. So we see now that we added a quite a large amount of loops in order to get this. In fact, if we count it, we could see that just our geometric selection here is, let's see, they, they hit all the data from you. They, you know, think, you know, people might need this information, but we see that uh, 16 edges are selected, 17 vertices just in this upper quadrant versus, boy, machine is messing with me today, versus five and four edges. So, Let's actually duplicate this over and give it a fair shake and try to clean this stuff up. So, you know, that's where, you know, topology know-how comes in of, you know, understanding that circumnavigating the form is definitely a way to work, but not, not probably the smartest. And the art of uh, consolidating geometry is definitely something that is what makes topology a fun adventure. So I'm just selecting three points and then shift R to repeat. And so we have everything pretty nicely consolidated. And I'm just wondering what to do with that. And so we could just diamond quad that, scale that in, scale that in. And we've now kind of tied this up into a nicer little bow compared to before where everything was just kind of going haywire. And we still have quite a few extra edges here, but we see that as far as sub D goes, that everything's a lot more controlled and centralized compared to just the solution of having everything go all the way to the edge. Because I mean, imagine if you began dealing with curvature, advanced turns into form, if your topology is just uh, uneven and your geometry and vert counts being next to each other, it's just gonna cause you issues whenever you begin to twist and turn things because polygons not being surfaces is definitely one of the rules you have to keep in mind, but it, it isn't something that is has to limit your style of modeling. You can definitely use it uh, to your advantage by just simplifying geometry whenever curvature requires it and complexifying it whenever you need it. So let's duplicate this and let's talk about uh, consolidating it even more. So let's say that we centralize this stuff at the center and we did the same here, and we tried to really turn these into quads and move this in. This sort of pattern would also work. We see that now we've simplified the edge to something like five verts and only four edges, which almost puts us back in line with what we had at the beginning with our kind of hyper-efficient manual solution that we were doing. So really in the end, depending on your needs, none of these are wrong. There's just um, a variety of methods you can use to approach them. So hopefully this video is assistive with someone as far as showing how I use the multi-tool and blender modeling tools just to kind of get around when it comes to creasing and subdividing areas and getting control. And the thing about sub D is that if we wanted to release this area or relax it, we would have to 
basically come in and slide all this geometry. We can't even slide it because the topology is just a little bit limited in that regard, but we are able to just move it over in mass, which will give us a more rounded appearance. In fact, we can do the same thing here. In fact, this used to be my old life was just sliding edges over away from other edges and sliding edges back over to other edges in order to get things to either be tighter or less tight whenever it comes to using the subdivision modifier. So there is still a degree of control to be had here, but I have become addicted to the hops method. So if we were to just shift D duplicate this over, the video has already passed 10 minutes, so might as well just have some fun here. We don't want to delete the mirror modifier, but we do want to get rid of the subdivision. And let's just take this moment to clean the mesh. And things are looking pretty good. And let's just run a bevel and run a sharpen. And let's just press Alt V, turn off overlays. And we are just looking at all of our X's. And despite all of these having slightly different topological solutions, this one is the one that probably stands out the most because of the um, kind of interesting result that the bevel's giving us with the shading. But the ability to control all the tightness just dynamically on the fly is pretty much one of the things I saw in the bevel modifier over the subdivision modifier, but there still is a reason to work in this particular fashion, especially when it comes to blocking in and building up your forms. I mean, if you don't have to use booleans, it's probably best to avoid them and save them for the times in which it's just rather difficult to create the form otherwise but with that i'll wrap up this video and i thank you all for watching i'll see you guys next time